When the election office led by Lisa Dealey first came under attack from then-President Donald Trump last year, it was more than a month before Election Day. Dealey, the chair of Philadelphia's three-member election commission and a Democrat, watched from home as Trump falsely claimed during the first 2020 presidential debate that poll watchers had already been turned away at early voting centers in Philadelphia. Bad things happen in Philadelphia, Trump said, Dealey's cell phone immediately lit up with calls and text messages. A lot of my family, my friends, got a little chuckle out of it, but I knew it wasn't at all something to laugh about, she told CNN. It was just the beginning. Trump's efforts to subvert the election began well before Election Day, and have only gained momentum since, with Republicans passing laws to restrict voting or make it easier for partisans to interfere in more than a dozen states, including key battlegrounds. Most recently, in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott signed an election bill into law last week over the fierce objection of the state's Democrats, who, in hopes of derailing similar restrictions proposed earlier this summer, had fled the state two times en masse. The state legislative efforts are bolstered by a coordinated, behind-the-scenes push by conservative groups to raise millions to support restrictive voting laws, spread in proven claims about voter fraud and fund sham audits of election results. All of which, election experts say, will make it easier the next time to overturn close results, and puts the future of free and fair elections in jeopardy. I don't think we've ever been at a point that's been quite this tenuous for the democracy, Christine Todd Whitman, a former GOP governor of New Jersey and a founder and co-chair of State's United Democracy Center, told CNN. I think it's a huge danger because it's the first time that I've seen it being undermined, our democracy being undermined from within. For weeks after the election, Trump tried to sabotage the will of American voters in his relentless attempts to overturn the results. He and his allies browbeat local officials in multiple states and tried in vain to coerce the Department of Justice to open a bogus investigation. They dispatched attorneys to file nearly 60 lawsuits across the country, all but one minor case were dropped or dismissed, some by Trump-appointed judges. But while those efforts were stymied by a thin line of civil servants, a concerted push in myriad states to set the stage for a future power grab is finding more success. It's all designed to make it easier to raise the doubt and uncertainty to allow a close election to be overturned, said Ben Berwick, an attorney at Protect Democracy, a nonpartisan organization that works to keep elections and election administration from being politicized. 2020 was a preview of what is likely to be darker times to come, if we continue down this path away from democracy. Polls show most Republican voters continue to believe Trump's lie that he won the election. In July, a poll from the Associated Press and the North Center for Public Affairs Research found that two-thirds of Republicans still believe Biden was not legitimately elected. That big lie, coupled with punishing new laws and threats against poll workers, has prompted fatigue in the field and a potential exodus of knowledgeable people to run smooth elections in the future, experts and poll workers say. What it's going to cause, and we've seen this happening across the country, is local officials are going to leave, said Matthew Masterson, a former senior cybersecurity advisor with the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, primarily responsible for elections. That opens the door to adding more political actors, less professional, more political actors, into the election space, which, again, is incredibly dangerous. Nearly one in three election officials say they feel unsafe because of their jobs, and about one in five listed threats to their lives as a job-related concern, according to a spring survey commissioned by the Brennan Center for Justice at New York University's Law School. Among them is Claire Woodall Fogg, the executive director of the Milwaukee Election Commission. In early August, nine months after the election, she received voicemails calling for her hanging. Those and other threats followed two right-wing websites publishing an email exchange in which she responded to a joke by an election consultant on November 4 about how the votes had been submitted at 3 a. 
M. The sites suggested Woodall Fogg delivered Joe Biden a questionable win in her district. In Philadelphia, Dealey was confronted outside the convention center a few days after the election by a man taking a cell phone video of her walking down the street. It was James Fitzpatrick, Trump's Pennsylvania Director of Election Day Operations, who lobbed allegations of corruption at her as she covered her face. It got millions of views, Dealey, an elected official, told CNN. And awful comments about my physical shape, people called me all kinds of names, people saying I should be hung for treason, that we should find out where she lives and kill her, we should bludgeon her. I mean, unbelievable, just as he did in 2016, when he claimed the upcoming election was rigged against him, Trump started calling the integrity of the 2020 election into question long before any vote was cast. The only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged, he told a group of supporters in Wisconsin last August. After the election, as the days ticked by, Trump's increasingly desperate behavior produced a steady barrage of headlines, as it always has. From his perch at the White House, a symbol of the strongest democracy in human history, he made personal phone calls to local officials, badgering them to change the results. He paid considerable attention to Georgia, another state that flipped from red to blue in November. In a particularly stunning exchange, Trump tried to convince Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to change the vote count, a move that became part of a criminal state investigation into attempts to influence the election.